If you were thinking about Leo the First and Geyseric, perhaps Kate Bond might come to your mind. Although Kate Bond is the most notable for me, there is more. In the world of geopolitics, Leo the First and Geyseric had interacted with each other, but not personally. They used diplomacy and military maneuvers to speak to the tense relations and suspicions of each other's motives. However, I will focus on the ten years before Kate Bond. At the beginning of Leo's reign, starting from 457 AD, he took a diplomatic approach with Geyseric, possibly due to the influence of Aspar, who was a half Alani. The European allies were allies of the Vandals, and Aspar was an old ally of Geyseric. The initial goal was to free the imperial women from the Vandals who had been captured since the Vandals' sack of Rome in 455. However, the relationship between Leo and Geyseric was tenuous. In Vandal Africa, Geyseric destroyed the city walls, except Carthage, for two reasons. One, there would be no revolts occurring in defensive locations. Two, the Romans would not use them in future conquests. However, Procopius of Caesarea also pointed out the success of Belisarius in the Vandalic War, partly for Geyseric's action. In the same year, Majorian became the Western Roman Emperor, and throughout his four years, he reconquered parts of Gaul and Hispania back to the Western Roman Empire with mostly Fuerteratu troops. Frank Mettler Clover III wrote of his thesis paper in 1966 about Geyseric and mentioned Leo's possible interest in Majorian's reconquests and possibly allowed Michaelinus and Amatia to be in Sicily for a potential joint expedition against the Vandals. El Casabani remarked about the Eastern Roman efforts during Majorian's reconquest, future Western Roman Emperor Procopius Antimius assisting Ricimer in raising a large army of Fuerteratu to battle against the Vandals in the future. In 461 and 462, Geyseric and Leo agreed to a treaty. Geyseric released Empress Eudoxia and her daughters Eudokia and Placidia and headed to Constantinople. Leo acknowledged the marriage of Hunaric to Eudokia and had to pay for her release. They married in 456 based on the sources from Theophanes the Confessor Sonaras and Nicephorus the Patriarch, acknowledging the 16-year marriage period from 456 to 472. Also, Leo acquiesced to not intervene in the Western Roman Empire's external affairs against the Vandals. However, Leo did not want to help the West because he refused to acknowledge Libia Severus as a successor due to Ricimer choosing him without Leo's consultation and approval. In addition, Lacidia would marry the Western Roman Senator Ancius Olibrius, Geyser's candidate for the Western Roman Imperial Succession after Libya Severus. Nonetheless, he was uninterested in the throne. Priscus and John of Antioch concluded it was an informal agreement after Maturian failed in his attempt to invade Vandal Africa due to the destruction of his 300 ships in Hispania. In exchange, Geyseric would not attack Leo's empire. Conclusively, R.C. Blockley deduced Leo was in a weak position due to his people and Aspar for their unwillingness to go to war against the Vandals. Also, going to a civil war against the Western Roman Empire was unacceptable. Prisca's conclusion was, Geyseric fomenting the divisions of the Roman Empire but this was an exaggeration. Sure, he was effective in using political situations to his advantage, but he was part of the larger context, the decline of the Roman Empire. Before going into the effect of the treaty, I will give a quick background of Olibrius and the context of Geyseric. Olibrius was most likely an envoy to the Eastern Roman Empire before the sack of Rome. His capture was more to serve as a diplomatic official. Although Leo gave no naval support to defeat the Vandal raids, there were diplomatic attempts to stop them. First, in 462 or 463, Priscus 
wrote of Leo sending Philarchus to negotiate peace with the West and the Vandals, but guys were confused. In 464, an Eastern Roman aristocrat and senator, Tatiana, served as an envoy and headed to Carthage to meet with Geyseric to stop his raids. However, Geyseric declined because he refused to meet with him. Also, Marcellina swore loyalty to Leo against Ricimer and went to Sicily around 465 and became the Magus de Militum of Dalmatia. In addition, Penny McGeorge added that Marcellina gave Epirus and J.R. Martindale included Dyrrachium as the furthest extent to Epirus. Priscus, Hydatius, and Sidonius Apollinaris acknowledged Marcellinus' success against the Vandal raids. In the same year, Livius Severus died, and both halves of the Roman Empire reconciled, and it allowed Leo to take military actions against the Vandals. The Astingi tribe of the Vandals raided Italy and Sicily, and there was a rumor of Geyseric planning to attack Alexandria. Sidonius Apollinaris, Theobanius the Confessor, and Priscus mentioned these raids, and Daniel the Sile wrote of the rumor. Daniel added the eunuch, Hylasius, to be the envoy to stop Geyseric from his potential attack on Alexandria. Also, Leo sent an army to Egypt to defend it. Priscus and Sidonius Apollinaris wrote of Ricimer's realization of the failure of a puppet emperor and the inability to deal with the Vandals alone due to the lack of resources and decided to consult with Leo to choose a new Western Roman Emperor, Procopius Antimius. He became emperor in 467. The raids on the east and west occurred soon after Antimius' ascension to the Western Roman imperial throne as a protest against him over Olibrius. Also, Procopius of Caesarea mentioned Leo, allowing Marcellinus de Maltia to retake Sicily and Sardinia in preparation for a joint expedition of Cape Bon with him, Marcellinus, and Antimius. Before the Cape Bon expedition, Leo attempted it one last time for peace with Geyseric. He sent Philarchus to announce Antimius' ascension, but also to give a warning that continued raids would lead to war. However, it served another purpose, the preparation for the expedition. Hydatis and John Malalas wrote about these points that I just gave. However, Geyseric knew Leo violated the treaty. According to Priscus, Procopius, and Daniel the Stylite, Geyseric sent his navy to raid Epirus, Greece, and the Greek islands. Procopius and Victor of Vita mentioned the raid on Rhodes because Geyseric wanted to disrupt the grain shipments from Egypt, the breadbasket of the Eastern Roman Empire. Finally, there was an attempt to invade Vandal Africa in 467, but failed due to the bad weather, which resulted in a postponement until the next year, the expedition to Cape Bon. This was Antonius' first act, and it was due to his intention to give with his army, companions, and Marcellinus to signal his motive against the Vandals. Leo I and Geyseric had mainly diplomatic contacts, but were unfriendly to each other. Initially, diplomacy was the main tool. But over time, Leo started to use a combination of both diplomacy and military means. Summarily, he reacted based on the internal and external situations, and simultaneously took an increasingly larger interest in the West, especially the restoration of the Western Roman Empire before the dramatic migration of 406 and 407 AD. On the other hand, Leo would not collaborate with his western half for refusing to recognize its eastern half's power and influence in western Roman politics.